For people watching this, you're looking at this round table because entrepreneurs and the initial thing about the insurance industry is none of us got involved in this as our first job. <laughs> no. People are attracted to the life insurance industry and financial services industry because somehow, some way, we've dealt with some form of financial pain. Yeah. And now that we've been educated about it, you gain more wealth of knowledge, not through our good mistakes with money, but more through our bad mistakes yep. with money. Education is about learning things for yourself. But wisdom is learning things through other people. I mean, if you think about guys like Mike Tyson, who had great talent, but he had the wrong person on his corner, and he lost all that money. It's, it's having the right people on your corner. It's more being careful about what you don't do more than what you do do, because you know what to do. But the blind spots, the underestimating how many blind spots and distractions as you grow, the money grows. Growing up in New Orleans, man, we only saw two ways of being successful. It was either being an adult dealer uh -huh. or you was a rapper. That was it in the city of New Orleans. Tap into an industry where there's no capping or income in the next two, three years, put your head down and make as much money as possible so you can so you can dictate not only your family future but your, your kids' future too as well. Embellish yourself in personal development because when your mind is working at full capacity, it is very difficult for anybody to get one over you. The government doesn't want put people so they can have a lot of leaners on the government. But what we need to do is start developing a lot of leaders in the community. Is equip yourself with information, the right information. Wisdom is you can either build it through experience or you can build it by who you associate with. This is my year. Stop it. It's not your year because you still have the same damn habits that got you in the situation that you're in. You're your only family savior. Your family is depending on you. Stop waiting for a president. Stop waiting for policy. Stop waiting for others. You got to get an action now. We're going to wait to see who's going to be president to determine what make moves you're going to make. That's not how life works. If you're always waiting, you'll stay waiting. You'll die waiting. Nobody is coming to save you. You have to save yourself. When I started to control my income, every day became Black Friday. That's right. What's cracking, everybody? My smart guy, Matt Zipali here. Welcome to another episode of the Seven Figure Squad podcast, live done here at Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We're here in the $10 million mansion, hanging out. It's an annual tradition. We do this called Million Dollar Roundtable Retreat. So no more leadership cars we do with our governor, our guys, our partners all across the country. And uh, we've done this in the past at Puerto Vallarta. We've been at Ojica Castle. We've been at uh, the Beverly Hills Mansion at uh, um, BC, BC, yeah, a bunch BC of letters. <laughs> uh, we've been all over the world doing this at Palm Springs House, for, which was uh, Stallone, the best of Stallone's uh, former home. So this is something that stretches our vision. We do some business planning for the final year to make sure our guys will make a million dollar operation for next year. And so uh, joining me today, if we can, we wouldn't mind just going, Marshall, let's start with you. Just uh, share your name and um, and see the state that you're from. My name is uh, Edward Musgrove. I'm from Memphis. I'm originally from California, but I'm residing right now in Memphis, Tennessee. Hey, cool, can it? So my name is Kehinde Thomas, you know, right here in Hollywood, uh, Florida. And uh, just, I mean, just fired up, man. <laughs> All right, man, my name is Ellis Swazo, uh, out of Atlanta, Georgia. Jonathan Mason, out of Orlando, Florida. Ricardo Aguilar, Bakersfield, California. Art Lamelli from Palm Desert, California. See, I'm Axel Etimani from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So, it's cool part about this whole entire thing. None of us came from money. None of us came from an inheritance. None of us came from a good credit score. None of us came from any head start in life. Uh, some more, less of a head start than others. Uh, if you talk about credit score, you can't even box in a credit email and a site account. But uh, all of us here, have started from this thing called Scratch. Yeah. So, um, let me start with you. Musco since you just kicked this up. What do you think a lot of people get a misunderstanding on in making the first 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 by your income? Well, especially in this industry, when it comes to the um, making a six-figure income is how fast, how fast you can actually get access to that. A lot of times, you know, in other backgrounds or other careers, you know, six figures, a lot of people you know, feel they're on a, some success level because they're making six figures. But here, um, six figures in income or the 250 income, it gets to a point where you're actually um, minimum wage. Um, a lot of times, too, when it comes to the income uh, income uh, point of view is here in this particular platform and industry, it's easy to make a six figure on your own personal efforts. But when you get to the 250 mark, the 300, 
um, the half a million, it involves you being a leader and involves you driving people and actually bringing on, bringing on a team atmosphere and, and being that leader to develop people. Yeah, to add to that, I mean, um, I come from a, I, I used to be a custodian at a high school uh, for about two years and my income then was about 28000 a year. And so when I joined this industry, you know, I never imagined making six figures because I've never done it before. And, um, you know, through the through this environment, through the guidance, through the culture, everything, um, you know, we made six figures in the first seven months with no prior background, no prior experience. I've never ran a business, um, let alone in the in, in this industry. So making that kind of money fast, um, you know, it was it was overwhelming. Seven months. In seven, seven months. That was seven months. In seven months. Your, your family take it as illegal? Uh, my family, uh, <laughs> they, they, we'll just say they questioned it a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit. But, um, you know, when you're in this environment, when you're in this industry, when you're around people um, like yourselves, it, it just, you guys make it not only, you don't, you guys don't just make it look easy, but with the, the guidance that's that, that comes with it, that's what makes this easy. The fact that we see, you know, you're other people yourself. doing it. Yeah, that you're not doing it by yourself. You have you have leaders that have done it, that have paved the the way, that 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 have paved the way for you, and and the fact that they're there every step of the way, telling you what direction to take, to so you can do it faster. And so when we first when we made our first six figures, you know, my wife has a very expensive taste, yeah. and so uh, right then and there we knew that that wasn't going to be enough. So we had to we had to push through, and now we're you know we're making well over two fifty a year, um, and so we're excited over for what the future. Three hundred a year. Well, right now, yeah, we're at over three hundred so a year. This time that's fifty thousand. Yeah, you just you want to be humble about it. You just have to laugh it out. <laughs> what was your income as a janitor? As a janitor, uh, well, custodian, because there's a difference. I, no, no, no. There's a difference. There's a big difference. No, no, no. Custodian is like a handyman. Oh. It's an oh. extra two dollars. Great. Oh, you know, a, ja a janitor, all they do is just they, all they focus is they just clean. How much you Um I was making twenty eight thousand a year uh, with overtime. 20, thirty twenty eight thousand a year with overtime, give or take about thirty thousand. In California, goes crest top. Well, what's crazy is yeah. is that in our first year of uh, our first full year in twenty nineteen of PHP, um, we made uh, thirty thousand in two to two two different months. Yeah. So, I, you know, the first time I did it, I'm like, I was just surreal, man. I'm like, how the hell? Yeah. I used to work 160 hours a month, yeah. 12 months straight, and I made 30000 And here, I, I did it in one month with no experience. Love it. Love it. So, but you guys, uh, you guys were out to, Kenny, how much money you made last month? I know about um, Last month, I made 46000 It's 46000 yeah. So what are what do people misunderstand? So they're at the hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar mark. What what oh here is back here. Yeah. So what would be any thing people misunderstand by getting to close to half a million dollar income? So I'll come to you next. Okay. You know, and the question is uh, what do people misunderstand? You know, like five hundred K? You know, I think there's um certain elements when it comes to making money. Mm -hmm. I've been very fortunate that I have made money. I've made five, I've made a meal. You know, so it's the first, the first hundred to two hundred fifty k. There's a certain level of feeling that goes, especially the environment you're in. If you're the first one, so you feel like you're the king of the hill. Then your environment elevates. Then you get into another section. You're approaching five hundred k, and then you feel a certain feeling about it again. Like oh my guy, king of the hill, until somebody is at the mill, or you're at the mill, somebody's at two. So I see a continuous uh, uh, drive. It's like a excitable appetite, yeah. you know, like you want to make more. But the feeling is this. Going into five, couple of things. Number one, the structure and organizing yourself properly because money stuff is just a paper, but the mindset is where the money really dwells. So if I make 500, it's what I save really down what I make. So if I'm at 500, but if I'm living like I'm doing a meal, I'm in trouble. So I think one of the biggest problems is this, that the money comes, but the discipline of being able to put the money away. I really believe that's the yeah. first biggest challenge. And the second part to it, the second part is this, that it's a societal pressure. 
because if you're making a certain amount, you should be living as a certain. It's just expected. But I believe there's a corrosion of some sort where people are like, especially in that country, where if you make 500, they expect to live like you make 750. So you make the, the, the house, it is that. But I do believe there's an illusion to that. Here's why I believe that. That has paralyzed savings to a significant extent that the average person doesn't have that money saved. So when emergencies happen, um, you're making 250, but you don't have 50 Gs put away. You don't have 75 Gs put away. you got emergencies, you're in trouble. So that is a certain temperature that goes along like at each level of the money you make that you must... Now, don't get me wrong, that's the element where you have to spend a lot of money to attract money. Sure. That's a different subject matter. So, so Suaz, you're, you're about to... Anybody in your family across the who knows Ick or who is that? No. <laughs> no, not so at all. You're, you're crossing $500,000 in, in, it's crazy because uh, you, you you did the right way in terms of going to school, then the college would have you on a podcast. Yeah. Now that you're crossing over five hundred thousand dollars, okay, what was different between you making your first hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, and not crossing to your five hundred thousand? Um, I think in the in the beginning, you know, making a first hundred thousand by becoming from an engineering background and already making six figures, my identity walking in was I couldn't make no less than six figures. And so some people walk in with varying identities to a different opportunity. I love art's perspective. It was like that was ignorance on fire, right? With a great coach who's already teaching him, who's making that type of income and guiding him and saying, hey, you can do it. Keep going. He was able to get there. Me walking in still obviously having a great coach. But my identity was like, hey, this got to work. So I got to make 100K, period, right? Because I'm looking to replace my income and leave corporate America, Right. And so, you know, 10 months, we hit our first hundred thousand in income. Um, and from there, there's a side hustle. It's inside. Right. Right. Which leads me to the next question. I mean, it's getting in, but what did you earn part time before you went full time? Uh, yes. Yeah, part time. We we cracked over two hundred and fifty thousand in income. Part time. Part time. <laughs> yeah. So I was was still working a job and uh, was able to crack a quarter million in income. Yeah, and you know, so it's, it's crazy because the environment is like, you know, like like Lomelli's, you know, Ricky's telling Lomelli, yeah, it's 300,000. It's like, you know, we it's humble and modest because, you know, the industry is worth so much and the income, we never want it to get to our heads because we know it's, it's not about money. It's great being able to take care of our families, obviously. Um, and it's been incredible, man. Just a kid from New Orleans who didn't have nothing to be talking about this type of type of money. But yeah, part time made a quarter million. You know, it, it feels good. You know, you're definitely not desperate. You're not worried about bills. You know, we never had to take any stimulus checks or anything during a pandemic. You know, we didn't have to worry about our mortgage, you know, not being paid, being put out. And, um, you know, to, to, to answer the question, like what, what it takes to get to that half a mil, um, it was really understanding that other people had to win too as well, you know, and really develop an agency, helping other people reach, you know, um, six figures and as well as now a quarter million dollar income earner and just continue to focus on that and helping people make their first 50,000 is very important. 100%. Keep that. Ricky, you uh, came from the oil and gas industry, supervisor. And uh, what you say, so these guys got an opinion and their experience of crossing and those are 20,000, 500,000. Talk about crossing seven figures. Um, just <clears throat> understand about crossing seven figures. The so people underestimate or don't or maybe not understand the part that uh, piggybacking on what Art was saying is the environment, the pressure. What we just talked about today in our meeting was a peer pressure. Um, having the right people in your corner, positive peer, pressure. positive peer pressure, of course. I mean, if you think about guys like Mike Tyson, one of the greatest, I mean, he had the he had great talent, but he had the wrong person on his corner, and he lost all that money with uh, with his uh, promoter. Don King. With, Don King. with Don King. So with us, it's having the right people on your corner, uh, training your teacher. And more than anything, like, for example, one thing that I that I appreciate right now more, uh, crushing over the, the, the you know, 100,000, quarter million, half a million, 750, a million, 
is more is more being careful about what you don't do more than what you do do because you know what to do. But the blind spots, which we talked about today, what Patrick talked about this today, was the, the underestimating how many blind spots and distractions as you grow, the money grows, your, it gets to your head, uh, you know, uh, the gluttony, the the drugs, the partying, the wanting to be part of the mix. Uh, matter of fact, uh, um, uh, uh, Matt, um, a, a, f- a friend of mine was a millionaire, owned multiple restaurants, was just recently murdered in L.A. Um, and his son was shot with them uh, because wrong place at the wrong time. And always partying, always out, always going out, um, wouldn't miss any club, always at the VIP. So and, bullet. It, no, it actually ended up being, after so much success, ended up fighting with the guy over a table. Oh, got it. The VIP table. So the guys waited for him outside and shot him and shot his son. Oh. He didn't. He, the son survived, but he didn't. But anyway, oh, my point is that it's a bad environment. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It's a bad environment, right? Oh. This environment right here, um, not only that, checks checks you whenever you're you're trying to you know stray. Like, hey, bro, what's up? What are you doing? What what do you got? You know, pay attention to what you're doing. Pay attention to where the accountability part of it. People underestimate how much you need that accountability. How much you need a good group of guys that are pushing you, motivating you, driving you, and and at the same time not being selfish with what they know. And when you have a group like this, um, like I said, picking back on what Art was saying, it just makes it easy. It's harder when you're doing it on your own, but it's so much easier when you have this environment around you. See, I want to ask you, because uh, you knew Patrick before. Everybody knows Patrick but David PVD. So, and also you're a believer too as well. So what are the misunderstandings there? Did you think a lot of faith, faith, if people go to church and pray to God and have a faith, mm-hmm. what do they have in terms of misunderstanding about making a million dollars? Hundreds of thousands and what is no? Sometimes I think uh, living that, the being humble and not wanting or, or thinking that they deserve to earn the money that they can. And sometimes I, I wanted to say, sometimes people think that getting, uh, starting a business involves a lot of money. And they don't understand that getting, that like people that purchase a McDonald's or a franchise, they spend millions of dollars to get into that industry or start a business. But with, with uh, like from my fi- side of the family, when I came into the business, they're all um, engineers, doctors. They thought going to school was the only way to be able to earn a lot of money or good money. But they didn't understand that, you know, with a small investment, that, but then investing in yourself and learning the business and the craft from the top people in the company that you'll be able to have success. So it's like when I tell my mom, yeah, this guy made $200,000 in a month, they're like, they don't doesn't register. Like, how do you do? Who, who, what do they do? They're gonna get caught one day. I'm like, no, it's it's legal. It's we're helping and all that stuff. But you know, it's it, it's your duty to be successful in life, even though you're a believer. Yeah, you have an obligation to your family, to your last name, to earn enough money to be able to be successful and to be able to give back. That's the that's the first thing. The beauty about our company and what we believe in is that the. It's the mission over the commission. Mm-hmm. It's not all about the money. It's what you can do with the money. It's not all about keeping it, but it's just spreading it and helping others. Like everyone around this table is, is helping others be able to earn more money than they ever thought they could by having a, a, a bachelor's or a PhD or whatever. You know, it's just the system that we have is just duplicating success. And it's, it, I think it's your obligation to find someone, a mentor like you guys, to be able to hang on to their coattail and for them to be guided in the right direction. Everybody here is running their own independent operation uh, from the city and state, their locations, uh, the homes back, back, back here. Um, you guys are dealing with people across the kitchen table every day. Uh, first of all, speak, um, Robert Kennedy Jr. And he put a stat wins talking points and that's 60% of all Americans. If they have a $1,000 emergency, they don't. They wouldn't know where the push is. And I mean, a $1,000 catch. Hmm. Outside of a credit card, outside of going to debt, they didn't live like I wouldn't live a pension pension, but like zero chance of preparing for any emergency. Mm-hmm. What do you guys see in in the field? What do you guys see across the state with the whole tech culture in America about the actual health of people in your in their, their fighters? Well, I'll, I'll I'll say one thing. Um, where where I'm from, uh, we're closer to the border, and um, you know even even. Even in our home, even in my hometown, I mean, the city's divided into two, the wealthy and the not wealthy. And one of the things that, that we've noticed is that when we, when we speak to the group of individuals on one side of the tracks, um, it, they know everything about the products, services, insurance, 
uh, annuities, how to invest, how to save. Um, you know, their financial portfolio is 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 different than the than than the other group. So where getting that the other group is well, the thing is, I mean, we have to look at we have to look at at, at how the government's the education that's being that's that the, the, the lack of that's occurring in 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 the schools. Um, you know, I think that more and more schools are being exposed um, where, you know, they're, 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 it's a business. School's a business and they're producing employees, taxpayers. And um, the, the, unfortunately, they're not teaching about the basic fundamentals of saving, investing, uh, preparing, um, insurance, all those things that could save America that could save a lot of families, not not be in so much debt. But I, I I really believe that you know the government is setting things up where where they they want it. they they need taxpayers, they need people to stay poor, they need people to stay ignorant, in uh, when it comes to finances, in order to manipulate and control them. Yeah, and yeah. and and because who's taxes? Well, the, well, the tax government. the government. I mean, that's the government. How you know cities are paid for though when 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 they when you look at taxes when you look at um scholarships that's how cities pay for when you look at scholarships when you look at uh how how these colleges and universities um you know and and by the way i'm not trying to bash school i mean school serves a purpose um but ultimately when you look at numbers when you have 65 percent of students that drop out their first year uh you know in college um, that it, 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 they're, they're dropping out with so much debt. Yeah. Um, drowning. and yeah. that they can't bankrupt because it's That's a federal crazy. loan. I pick, and, I, I piggyback off of that. You didn't mean to cut you off, but it's crazy that because a person, a person graduating college with a BA degree in business marketing, minor psychology, I'd never spend off from college and went to go work at nine to five, I've always been in sales. And I made, you know, millions. I made 900000 I made seven figures selling newspapers. And the biggest challenge out of it was uneducated about money and finances. Yeah. I still was check to check, you know, because of me growing up in South Central LA and grew up in Watts, my success was more material things. Yeah. So once my contract was canceled and I pivot over into the insurance industry, the biggest thing is I had to pawn all my Rolexes, pawn it, you know, some of my wife, my, my wife purses and stuff like that because I didn't have any retirement. I have any savings. And then pivoting into the industry is crazy, though, because you see certain things. You see um, a lot of individuals that you walk in their homes and they're big timing you. And and sometimes sometimes as the individual being the experienced one expert. And I don't know if you guys felt like that, but sometimes when you barely knew in the industry, you're nervous going across that kitchen table. And then when you do your presentation and you gather information, it's like what the heck these people don't have nothing in place what am i you nervous for debt. you got more debt and liability right they, they're they're making they're making the income but all they have is a basic 401k the the crazy right the crazy questions though it's the questions though in memphis tennessee is are they going to run my credit on this you know my credit is not that good um uh, is this going to i'm buying a home you know is this going to affect me getting a home and stuff like it's just so crazy like in our neighborhoods and the people in our communities, like we're so afraid of breaking that barrier and doing something regards to our money and finances because all we are familiar with is a 401k or term insurance or things like that. We're not, we don't understand the concepts of permanent or the concepts of different investments when it comes to life insurance. So that's why I like, I love the industry and what we do because I'm being personally educated, you know, myself while I'm working in, working in the industry. And, and, and to add, I mean, look, the reality is when there's no education, uh, what's filling that gap? If there's no financial education, what's filling that gap? It's, it's all this social media because now more than ever, social media is, I mean, this is the new TV. Well, yeah. I asked ask you that. Where, where, where do you think most people go for information? Oh, their phone. Phone. Their phone, where social you, media. Where do people go for education? For edu their phone. YouTube. If I want to get YouTube, Google. Okay, keep going. But if I want to get a degree in this or certification in this, am I going for education? In, in what aspect? What What are you? If I want to get a degree, if I want to get an education, I'll get a job. I go, what? You can get into entrepreneurship. Uh, cool, right? I go to school. We go to school. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. So if, I, if I'm going to get information, phone. If I'm going to get education, Ac uh, which I should write off academic. I'm going to get academic education. Where people go? College. Oh. College. School. Okay, you're the better boy. 
something you're touching on. Be, you know, where do people go for wisdom? Ah. Uh. <laughs> That's different. Seven Whoop. figure squad. Yeah. yeah. Is, yeah. You know, all the, you know. so, but, but look at this. All of us right now, iron sharpens iron. Yeah. yeah. Everybody here, very different income, but we're we're all we're all broke at one point. Yeah. Like a twenty thousand dollars a year as a sergeant in the Marines. Everybody here was broke yeah. to a certain degree at one point. But now we're in six figures, two fifty, five hundred thousand, seven fifty million bucks. What's your thoughts on you said the, you're one of the best people in the company to go prosecute still with other books? I, I appreciate that. Uh, well, one, there's the difference between self-education and formal education. They say formal education will get you a living, but self-education will get your life. And it makes no sense to me going to school to spend six, seven hundred dollars on a textbook to cost six bucks to make. You sell it back to them for two hundred dollars and it's used all over again. I'm sorry. Accounting has not changed in 400 years. So why do they keep raising the damn prices of the same book? <laughs> Usually when something's used, they should devalue either way. So I think there's a pressure of us having to go to school and then we don't know what we want to do. So people do two things, either A, go become a real estate agent, which is a whole different category, which I disagree with today, or B, they go back to school for what? Yeah. To get another piece of paper with no real world experience. So I'm going to get my master's. What have you mastered in 12 months with no experience? That's the purpose of a master. You, you, know, you have a master's. Uh, I love you too, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> but you're supposed to have a master in something. And I think a lot of people have the identity, going back to what we talked about, is six figures is the peak. That's because their environment, their associations are academics. Mm -hmm. But if you, you know, you got a Urus, you got a Lambo Urus, you got a, a Rolls Royce, I got a Lambo, we got, we all, you got a Bentley, we got nice cars. Yeah, range. The, 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 the range, right? The, the license course. plate, the license plate, usually when you see those exotics, those expensive cars say entrepreneur, you know, biz, you know, it never says employee. It never says degree. I don't know anyone that has a degree or just a regular employee that can even afford, bless you, right? <laughs> that can afford that kind of lifestyle. So you have to own a business, but they don't teach that in school. They teach you how to go to school, right? Because you have to go to school, you have to get a what? Degree, so you can get a good job and then work until you die. What, wait, no, retire, Kahindi, retire. Don't, not die. Everyone's probably saying die because you're taught to work till you die. What the hell kind of life is that? Work till you die. That's what we're taught. Work till you die. Yes. Makes no sense. So the, the challenge is we, we're in the matrix, which I'm excited for our event called Escape in the Matrix. That's right. And, and, and the challenge is people are no longer thinking for themselves because they're embarrassed by what their friends, family, peers are going to say if they go against the grain. But the most successful people I know financially, spiritually, uh, uh, family-wise, have always gone against the grain. Well, when you've been wired... I mean, to, to piggyback on, um, uh, it, it, it's when you've been wired, you're forced. I mean, even, even at early ages, parents are, are sold this idea that the sooner you get your child to what, the sooner you get your child connected into a school, I hear you, yeah. the more likely they are to graduate college. So what do, so, so parents, parents, feel they're, the they're, they're, they feel the pressure, not only the pressure, but I think. I think that, you know, my parents, they, my dad went to a uh, university in, in Mexico and, and he ended up making, building a career, making, he retired making 80, 90,000. Okay. So in his mind, this is the blueprint you should follow. Did you see the USA Today article two days ago? No. Average student loan debt. 150,000 majority of it is interest. Well, yeah, but here's the oh, thing. Oh, no, no, you here, today. no, no. And here's the thing. They're, 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 they're indoctrinating. They're, they're, they're plugging kids in at an early age. Who's their biggest mentor for 12 years? The teachers. Where are the, the teachers. Now in elementary, do you guys remember what pictures, what images would you see around the school or, or around the classroom? It's with what images? You're trying to scare back, me now. Back to my eyelids. Gover, gover, governmental jobs. Nurse. Oh, yeah. Firefighter. Oh, fire, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. so they're grooming. Right. Or custodian. Because no, I, I didn't see that one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that one. But but your biggest mentor is who? It's the teacher. So so and then what what's what's uh you know, I hate to say this, but who's the enforcer? If you don't send your kid no. Who's the enforcer? Who's the enforcer if you don't send your kids to school? Uh, government. CPS. That's the child, child, child protection. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. now if you're not sending your kid to school, what are they doing? Oh, you're you're endangering. You're in danger. Yeah, yeah you're in trouble right. as a parent. Yeah. And guess what they'll do? 
oh, you don't want to send your kid to school? No problem. We'll yank them out of your house mm. and we'll send them to a foster care where that family will send them to school so we can continue to indoctrinate them. Well, let's talk about policy first. Oh, that's, 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 okay, here we go. Now okay. we go. That's, that's, and we're off. That's, 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 <laughs> no for his own. Yeah. No. But uh, uh, Ricky, what's some of the misunderstandings from an economic policy standpoint that you saw, that you see individual? Oh, man. I was in the <laughs> Latino culture. It's just seeing your fellow brothers up in the black and Asian and Caucasian culture. What have you seen that is misguided economic policy wise? Well, first, <laughs> well, first we of all, go. first of all, we don't talk about it because it's taboo. So in the black and Hispanic households, it's always you don't talk about politics, you don't talk about money, you don't talk about religion. Yeah. The three things that the wealthy speak about, we don't speak about because it's taboo. And the Asian and Asian side too. Because oh, that's Asian, right. Asian, that's Asian right. Never organized yeah. politically either. Right. Yeah. And I think what happens is that. When you don't have those conversations at home, then you let some prof liberal professor talk to your kids about it. So they teach them not about God. They teach them to work until they retire, like John said. And they don't teach them, obviously, they're not going to teach them anything about religion, which is not their job to begin with. But when you leave, when you leave those gaps, somebody's going to fill them. So we don't even talk about politics or policies or anything because... And the reason that we can't have... The, the only reason they say don't talk about those things is because they say they're touchy subjects. And we, we want to have peace on the on the kitchen table we're talking about our future or they're right? not or they're not educated on it so they can't give they can't give you but even how to have a conversation yeah. because, yeah. well because it's going to get heated and they know that yeah. yeah so we're not having those conversations within our communities and i and and i think that that's that's the part that that bothers me the most within the hispanic and black community and in the asian community and in other minority communities that we're not having essential conversations therefore those gaps that we have like you know like art said for 12 years are being filled by somebody else's ideologies yeah. and they're typically not the best influences. So that's that's what I feel that we're missing within the within the minority. Ricky, one thing though on that. I'll, yeah. Look at don't I'm a white boy, but we didn't have those conversations no, no, either. No, I, I, so you're, a lot of it. But but so, I think it's upbringing. I think it's yes, environment. Now but, my dad's but, also a school teacher. Right, right. Who was also an entrepreneur. But if we look if we look per capita, correct. white families are having those conversations more yeah. than we. Are. Typically, yeah. correct. Typically, we're they're, they're having those. Agreed. Because every single you know what's crazy. Right. Most of the things that I've learned in business, outside of obviously building, because I've learned from the guys on this table. But as far as business, I've learned it from white guys. I'm not learning it from Hispanic guys. I learned it from Tom Ellsworth. I learned it from Mark Johnson. I learned it from Ian. I learned it from uh, from the people that I've been around because I've been around Patrick. So we're not having this conversation. And, and it's crazy to me because I think to myself, no wonder their kids grow up to be super successful. No wonder their kids grow up to be CEOs because they're having the conversations at an early age because they're filling the gaps that we're leaving open for anybody to pour their ideas into. Yeah, I noticed that when I was talking to Chandler Kirk and the interview Chandler Kirk. Oh, yes. Because his father was an entrepreneur. Right. And the conversation about entrepreneurship and activism was very apparent. Right. And look at Charlie now. Yeah. I mean, the guy is just tearing it up and yeah. he doesn't even have a kind yeah. of degree, but he's got the largest student network of political activism in the country. Turning oh, point. Oh, 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 turning point, you were saying. Yeah. Uh, uh, so as you went to college, you got, you're got you a pretty smart dude. You got an engineer. <laughs> you fought through it. You were a team parent. You fought your way through and you know, regardless of what family said about you. Yep. Economic policy. Shoot, there ain't no there ain't no economic policy in the black community. <laughs> you know, um non existent. It's it's non existent. It's pretty much, you know, man, like we say, it's just work until you die, figure it out, you know. Section eight, welfare. That's, that's it. You know, I was talking, you know, talk, I mean like, you know, I grew up on, you know, eating government cheese, bologna. That was that was it. I was talking to one of my guys. And, um, you know, he was just saying, you know, growing up in New Orleans, man, we only saw two ways of being successful. It was either being a dope dealer uh -huh. or you was a rapper. That was it in the city of New Orleans. I never saw any other people that were successful. You got to go to Master Peter Peter uh, Carpenter. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, um, and then once anybody ever figures it out and you try to go back and tell people, they don't want to hear it. Yeah. You know. And so, you know, I got two routes, right? I, one route was school was able to get out. Another route was obviously entering entrepreneurship. And many people don't want to hear where I'm from. You, you know, record about that. It, you said you said it's easier to fool people than to convince them they've been fooled. Yeah. yeah. Mark Twain says it is easier to fool people than convince them they have been fooled. Because no one wants to admit that they were wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That's ego. Oh, what's yeah. that other quote? Tell the lie. Oh, say, the lie. Uh, Hitler said, say the lie, repeat the lie, they'll believe the lie. Yeah. That's deep. That's deep. Okay, so let's talk about. Well, 
misunderstandings that people are like, really life insurance in your shirt. That puts some of the misunderstandings you see across the kitchen table of fabrics in the room. People that you even recruit on developing in the insurance industry or associates of yours working in the parts of a boat it. But some of the misunderstandings that people have in your communities and your clientele that they have about insurance, life insurance. All right, let me, I want, I want to chime in on this. I have, I have to chime in on this, you know. You say I, um, I grew up in an environment where they didn't even believe in insurance. So like my folks believe that if you talk insurance, you are about to jinx them. That means yeah. that, you know, you say same thing, yeah. right? So it's like, don't talk about it. But then the reality is this though, somebody pass and then nobody has money. So first you got this philosophy that you believe in, but then you are the consequences that you can't handle. So there is this dichotomy of how to reconcile like the, the narrative that insurance is not, you should be talking about, but yet you're begging for money. So how do we deal with this? My personal experience, my dad passed, no insurance, you know, yeah, and there were eight of us. Wow. So mom has to raise everybody, three meals a day. I was, at, I was seven years old at the time. Mom has to raise all of us. Three, it came to a point, three meals a day was a struggle, you know, as, as a kid, holding my shoes. I remember like yesterday. But then I also witnessed, like coming to this country, where I saw like one of my friends, that passed away in Pittsburgh, and then they collected insurance claim. That's the first time I actually saw how, like, what insurance, the value of insurance. Now, that never sold me on it, but I thought, oh wow, this is amazing. I wish I had this when my, you know, when mine happened. So, I think there are two points I want to make about it. The number one point is this: that the lack of understanding of insurance is a perpetuation of cultural belief that needs to be overcome either with experience, environment, or consequences of lack of that is so painful that you don't ever want that to happen. Mm -hmm. That's the second part. The second part, you know, is this, that I feel like we have a crusade that we have to educate like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. We have to educate because when things happen, especially, let's say you're the breadwinner in the family, and like us, and with the one that maybe makes the most money in our family or extended family, I'm talking us, the brokers, the insurance folks. Imagine if everybody is coming to you for everything, but then these are the same people you talk to for insurance and they say no to you. But then when shit hit the fans, you can, you know, but yeah. when stuff happens, guess what? I follow you, so, <laughs> But when it happens, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. then yeah. they call you and say, hey, by the way, can I borrow? Can I do this? Can I do that? But these are relatives. Well, then what do you do? Is it time to say, remember I told you? Yeah. I told you so? Or do you just write a check? No, that's another thing that we have to deal with. Yeah. So, and I feel like we have a responsibility to make sure everybody around us, regardless their, their approach to insurance, everybody needs to be covered, especially if it's going to come back home to us. You know, one of the things I've been saying, just to piggyback off the Andy right quick, what that is, do you buy, well, first off, do you get car insurance because you believe you're about to get into a car accident? Yeah. You're forced to buy it. You're, you're forced, forced to yeah. buy it, but also, but do you believe you're about to get no, into a car no, accident? No. 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 Do you get phone insurance because you believe you're about to break your phone? No. no. Do you get health insurance because you believe you're about to get a heart attack? No. So why is there as cliche or yeah. some jank shit that you about to die yeah. because you want to make sure that your family is protected if something yeah. happens to you or even worse, right? This fact that what 70, 76, 72 percent of people, 72 percent of people are going to experience a health condition and health insurance is not going to pay your damn, you know, your bills. Yeah. Right. Right. It's not going to pay your mortgage, your rent, right? Your cell phone bill, your car. None of that. And that's what the life insurance helps with the gap, the gap. But. Also, we just don't have enough people sitting at this table that look like us that's in the industry. That's right. That's, and that's, that's, that's the problem. You, you don't look like you? Male male? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I said, the average age of insurance guy is stale, pale, and male. It's a boring 60 year old white guy. Who the hell wants to work at that? Morning. Yeah. Almost, almost got some time, but you come to my office, you got 10,000 square feet of fun. Yeah. I, got a, I got a live DJ and everything in the yeah. office, but think about this insurance is a bill, car insurance bill, cell phone bill, you know, a uh, health insurance bill. Luggage bill, travel bill, disability bill. Life insurance might be a bill, 
but it's the only bill that will cover all the other bills. Yeah. If something were to happen. Now, Harvard did a weird study about three, four years ago. It studied, it surveyed a thousand people. One for the first time ever, one hundred percent of them all agreed they're going to die someday. Of course, yeah. 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 it's insane. Not it's insane. You know, so, we're kind of so it's it's pretty crazy. What I say is, I just moved to South Florida. Okay, so I'm new to South Florida. They have these things. I, I got bash. Yes. Everybody watching this right now. Yes. It kind of got everybody figured out where they come from. With the right? Yes. I'm confused with you right now. South uh, Carolina. I'm, I look like I'm Mexican, but I'm really Iranian. So I'm from Iran. So my Where'd parents wanted me. To, uh, they wanted me to become either an engineer, doctor, or lawyer. And if you're not one of those three, you're a loser, right? You, you didn't. You didn't make it in life. No but you know, get well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When you when you come to. By America, the way, this table know. it's allowed, guys. Yeah. It's all right. So, They're allowed at this table. But I say. This it, is called friendship for people that are watching. It, it, These it, are called friends. We're allowed to crack jokes yeah. at each other. It's in okay. So, in South Florida, they have these things called hurricanes, right? And and uh, people get ready for it. They tell you in two weeks, the hurricane's coming. We it's call them parties. Happen, yeah. You know? call parties. Yeah, yeah. So what happens is you get ready for it, right? But two things are guaranteed in life, death and taxes. Yeah. Well, if we know, I know some people look like they've been alive forever, but I don't know anyone that's been alive forever, right? But so don't you think we should be prepared for that day? Yeah. So I think we should be prepared because we get prepared for a hurricane, but we don't get prepared for the final day that we pass away. Yeah. When then we leave a lot, you can do two things in life. I think someone had mentioned that. They said you can be either a blessing or a burden to your family. Right. And a lot of people end up becoming a burden to their family, not knowing that when they pass away, it's pretty expensive to die. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not it, the the bill is left to the to the loved ones that are left, and they're already trying to struggle and and make it through life anyway. So why not be a blessing and leave something behind to be able to cover the bill oh, and and, well, and, and 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 help Either. the next generation? So, but some people say, you know what? I went through I went through a lot of shit. I, I'm not gonna get it. My kids let her figure this shit out. But I what kind of father is that? You wanna, you wanna be, you, you know, you, man, that's pretty selfish. selfish. You gotta be able to set it. up for your family so they can have a blessing. Because we live in this country on earth and we're allowed to have insurance. In some countries, they don't have this kind of stuff. So right. why not be prepared and leave final stuff for the family so they can be able to be a blessing? Man, two things to piggyback off CMA. One, I actually talked to a person that was in the UK one time. Weird thing how I was able to connect with this person, but the, he said he had worked in the insurance industry in the UK and they don't have the same type of life insurance that we have here in America. Oh, really? So Explain. life insurance is different around the world. Yeah. All right. Explain. So in, in the UK, it's only when you die. That's it. No living no, benefits, no cash value, you know, being able to take out money from your policy, don't have to pay any taxes. Right. It's completely different around the world. We're so it's, it's blessed. Not creation, it's not wealth for creation. Not building to it. it is so we're so blessed here in America. Right. And the second thing I add, you asked me earlier about the economic, you know, in the black community. And the most ignorant statement I've heard across the kitchen table is, well, I don't care. I'm going to be dead anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh it's all selfish. Okay. Yeah. It's that's yeah. so selfish, man. You're going to leave your people with a bill don't know what's happening right and i've talked to parents i say how are you going to well my mama going to take care of my kids she's already taking care of her kids why would you want to be a burden yeah to your mom your without, last name lives on without leaving anything behind so that your kid grows up to resent you because you didn't leave anything behind because they struggled or they had to go to foster care is that what you want for your family wealthy white family they have insurance. Yeah. The phone, uh, I don't know. Everybody's taking care of. I don't know. Well, majority. So, <laughs> majority. If it's, if it's part of the reason why masterpieces of the rich get richer. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and if you want to create economic wealth and generate capital inside the multicultural community, get a debt policy. They're the insurance companies yeah. to, to pay out a debt. So watch this. You guys like karaoke? I like karaoke. Get your song. Here we go. 83 late in red. Yeah, that's it. My OnlyFans page is launching next week. So, ready? If we went, if I go like this. Yeah. So, we are farmers. I'm going to take a box of dollars. All right, yeah, right, right. So, uh, you're in good hands. You know, it's not Gecko, it's... All these PNC companies, car insurance, homeowners, boat insurance, everyone's insurance is fun and playful. Go watch a life insurance company uh, market itself. 
Hey, Larry, I think we should look at getting some insurance. Uh, and then it's a guy that's about to fall down. Like, who the hell wants? It's depressing. And then it's a final expense plan. It's $10,000 or $4,000. Of course, it's not changing life. But imagine there's a life insurance policy, right? Someone passes away. Yo, Tommy just passed. We got 20 mil. Let's go. They go to Vegas and they show him on a yacht and a crew. Make it, I mean, I'm mean, a little over exaggerated, but make it fun. That's true, though. Where it's like, damn, look what you can create. Show yeah. that you, your family's either can sustain, maintain, go down, or go up. You can either change your last name or it's going backwards. That's a great example. So you had to change how it's marketed. Like, people go become realtors. Why? Because they want to be all flashy. I don't know if we're going to get into it, but most real estate agents are hurting right now. They are hurting. I won't say the word broke, but they are because they're living off their savings from what they did two, three years ago. They are hurting. Show me the numbers. Give me an MLS number. I'll pull it up at 8%. I don't know what the hell you're buying right now. But the fact is, it's a struggle. But the way the marketing, the real estate industry did, sexy. HGTV, yeah, fix on. it or flip it, million dollar listing. It's so sexy. Sorry, dog. And by the way, speaking about National Association of Realtors, just lost a class action lawsuit. Sorry. Yep. And so the way that real estate agents going forward forever will be change. Mm -hmm. 1.6 million real estate agents will be looking for lesser income mm. going forward. And by the way, it's nothing they are doing. It's a class action lawsuit. So they're going to be making changes. But the it's okay. cracked to them. They, yeah. ca they can't let they can't oh, let it go oh, because go. they go to a motivational event. They said it's going to come back. I get it. You really want to wait two years? You want to wait? Well, or Let's play the card. Let's say it does come back. You'll still be getting paid less yeah. than what you were getting back. So, you know, now you, it's now cracked. Two, three times worth of work for the same commission check you're getting. Okay. And you know, you know, another thing I've, I, I've sat with a few individuals that, that have their life license, the, uh, but, but what they tell me, they're uh, PNC. Yeah. And they tell me, they're like, yeah, you know what? I don't like life. Like why? Ah, there's more money in commercial insurance. There's more money in, in, in those. In and to me, it's like, like, bro, how many people have you sat with none that you could have helped with that life license? Thousands. You know what so, I mean? Yeah. So go back to real estate. Are there realtors that are still doing well and it will always? There are. Sure. sure there are. hundred percent there are. I'm talking about majority, especially the rookies. No clue. The PNC guys have the other license because they're just looking as an easy upgrade, upsell. Hey, I already got you this. Might as well look at this. Yeah, come no on. one's professionally training them. There's no professional sales yeah. training because people look at, number one, sales as aggressive. Sales is asking questions and solving problems. That's all it is. No one said you have to be pushy. That's well, powerful. Define aggressive because everyone has a different definition of aggressive. Agree. If I'm if I'm if I'm asking you if I'm asking you a specific question, like hey, let, let let's have a real conversation. What what are you gonna do right now? You have nothing that you're leaving behind. That but that, be that's you. I'm talking about majority. How how society pushes it. Oh yeah. How they yeah, sell the it. Marketing the marketing. That's is, where I'm going is, with this. Is, okay, there we go. Disregarding. The the base the, the the fundamental aspect of a household, um, you know, when they, when you look at car insurance, you know, who regulates car insurance? Like, think about it. Why is it mandated for you to get car insurance? They're, they're, because well, the what because uh, attack me at forced people to get car insurance? Right, because banks want to protect their assets, assets. assets. Yeah. and as soon as you are finished paying that car, guess what? Liability. liability. You can get liability because you. now it's all on you. It's all on you. So, no, no more complications. No more, yeah. Or, or even it's homeowners kind of, insurance. It's kind of funny. They protect the home, sure. and as well, soon as you well, pay it off, guess what? Well, hey, you don't need it anymore. Well, we just think of Bowley. So, so <laughs> you, you get a car before you roll off the driver's, uh, uh, before you drive off, uh, you need car insurance. insurance. When you uh, buy a home or rent an apartment, you need yeah. renters yeah. or homeowners. Yeah. Home yeah. It's mandatory. So you guys let us answer this question. Pause real quick. When you have a kid, before you leave the hospital, you need proof of car seat. Where did it go? <laughs> yeah. That is so I, I don't like that's that's car crazy. Seat. But yeah, that's the most important thing. That's crazy. The baby. Yeah. The yeah. financial well-being of the baby. Correct. And if our job as men is to protect mm -hmm. and provide, yeah. not only from a provision step for you gaining your job, but if you've got a child in this world, you have a financial responsibility to make sure the child is taken care of. For it, the rest it, of it, and then it all goes the back people. To, to Alice's point where it's like, as a man, and, and to your point, Matt, as a man, like when you're gone, what what that's the last example you're gonna leave your kids. What's yeah. the proverb? A wise man leaves an inheritance to, to his children. His children. Yeah. children. Yep. Yeah. So if you're going to church every week, you believe, why don't you have it? Yep. Well, and if you only have turn with ninety eight percent of it lapsing, why do you only have that? And what's funny is in the church, there's a course that teaches just to get term. Oh man. 
Let's yeah, add to that, John, because, you know, I, I, we're going to have some viewers out there saying, well, I'm, I do have an inheritance to leave to my children's children, and it's called real estate. Yeah. Okay, if that <laughs> real estate is not in a trust, yeah. it's not in an LLC, and your children it's called. are not co-owners or, you know, co-founders or whatever in that LLC, you're leaving a bill to your yeah, kids. Yeah. It's called probate. 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 Yeah. You're going straight to probate court, man. And how much goes to probate? Matter of fact, yeah, lawyer, matter fact that's what happened. Uh, that's, that's what happened with uh, that's what happened with uh, with uh, um, the guy from Fast and Furious, John, John Walker. Yeah. Paul, 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 Walker. Paul Walker. Paul Walker. Paul Walker. Paul Walker. Yeah. Ty Tyrese had to help his daughter mm. pay the taxes to get his estate. Yeah. So when we seen this guy and go through mother, it, the mother of Chloe, the daughter, had to sue her daughter because they weren't married. Right. So the natural next of kin was not the mo the mother and the child. It was Chloe, the daughter. Right. And imagine having to sue your daughter. That's and insane. wasn't his financial advisor the one driving? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So when people say, I have a financial advisor, most FAs are clueless. Well, I have a license. Okay. Yeah. There's bad drivers. You have a license. Bad massage therapists. You have a license. <laughs> bad mortgage people that have a license. Bad realtors that have a license. Bad, bad insurance guys that have a license. Bad FAs that have a license. A license means you can read a book. Pass the test the and then be compensated for a service or transaction. It does not mean you know this industry. Right. I know a lot of dumb insurance guys, a lot of dumb realtors, a lot of dumb FAs, financial advisors. So your license means nothing. Yeah. So when someone says, I have a financial advisor, from where? They tell me the company. I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> they don't know what they're signing up for. You know, financial advisor trained on mutual funds, yeah. stocks, Talks bonds. bonds. Yeah. Not trained on insurance. insurance. But going yeah. deeper though, fellas, like the biggest issue too though is the companies that these insurance agents are working for because they're forced to sell because their company only offer a certain product. So if their company's offering a certain product, that will give that first that, that refusal. Incentivize. Yeah. Right. That will give that bad comment of, you know, an agent pushing something down yeah. someone's throat compared to what we do. We're a broker where we actually have access to everything. And we're 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 here to sit down with them and see what's bet fit them because we can offer it. We're not incentivized so, so to how, sell one company over another. So how do we fix that? How, how 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 because that's one of the biggest challenges right now in the industry because they sit down with someone like us that we offer everything we have a rare everything, and they're so used to that insurance agent with that one product or that the one two three products they have they might have term they might have permanent. But that permanent policy that they have might not be the best fit for that particular client, but it's stuffed down that client throat. Mm -hmm. So now when we walk across the kitchen table or through Zoom or at someone home, yeah. now they're in a defense mechanism because they were done wrong. Yeah. Can I just say about that real quickly? Uh, that's a type A, type B, type C problem. Type A is you walk into a house, I don't have insurance. That's a that's a, an emergency critical situation. Our responsibility is to do what? Insure them. Protect them. Thank you. The second one, I have insurance, but it's insufficient, which means I did the analysis. I need a million. Now I'm, I'm only carrying 400. If something happened to me right now, that means that that's correct. Somebody's got to come with a check for 600. That's a type C. Type C is the one you're talking about. That means... I got a type of policy, but it's the wrong type of policy. So therefore, how do I make it right? That's type C problem. On a type C problem, you know, it just comes down to one thing, one thing and one thing, which is what? Education. It comes down to this. So I'm in the house, you know, maybe I have a whole life or maybe it's a term or whatever the case might be. You know, there's a natural tendency for them to be defensive to us. Why? Because naturally they felt like Maybe somebody did something to them and you are that person, but you're not. So my first reaction is, listen, just understand your kid come up to you and they say, I love you, right? Yeah. I love you, mommy. I love you, pop. Yeah. I have a question for you. What was the last time your, uh, your kid came up to you and say, mom, dad, make sure you get the right insurance in case you croak. Has it ever happened? No. Guess who speaks on behalf of that? I am. So today, I need to understand that I am now the voice of your daughter, the voice of your son, the voice of your spouse. You know, so I'm going to guide you the right way because what you have, I have to make sure that I fix it for you. Okay, now let's go to work. So that is a mental shift of some sort that needs to take place first. It's not a, it's, this is not a better, it's more like an alpha shift, you know, and then scale. 
So it's a it's a it's that type of an approach, but you have to it's a buying in first before that takes place. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I think that a lot of people, you know, just a quick one, Matt. I'm sure you want to touch on the subjects, but a lot of people we forget that statistically speaking, mathematically speaking, insurance, life insurance, is the first shock of wealth of any family. That's true. It's a first shock of wealth. Yeah. So. Uh, you can provide that. You can literally not build. You know, let's say let's say somebody's just watching to this podcast right now. So, man, I I, I don't see myself doing insurance. I, I you know whatever the case may be because it's not for everybody. Right? I, it can be, but it, as, maybe as an industry, as, as an industry, as a career. But man, you still want to leave a legacy. Your insurance policy will do that for you without you ever building a business. Instantly, instantly, instantly. Yeah, it's the premiums. Lord, Lord, that's it. Over, but it's not sold that way. But no, of course not. But what I'm saying, it's the first yeah. shock of wealth that any family will receive. And matter matter of fact, Master P. The reason he was able to start because his dad left an insurance policy. That's, right. that's how you have now Master right? P. Yeah. So when you think about these things, um, even if you don't want to join the industry, hey, how did McDonald's start with the cash value account? How did Disneyland start with the cash value account? How did uh, 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 Foster Farm start with the with the cash value JC account? JC Penny cash value account. So even if you're like this industry is not for me, PHP. Yeah, there you go, there you go. But even if the industry is not for you, no problem. Hey, I want to own one of these because either I'm going to leave a legacy through my insurance policy after I die, or I'm gonna use this policy to eventually open up a business or do something that's gonna put my family in a position to be able to win to where that financial burden or that financial living paycheck to paycheck ends with you and a new generation starts. So they say that humans have been around, give or, give or take about 14,000 years. Obviously it's been longer than that, but 14,000 years. In 14,000 years, the people before you did not make a change. Think about how many generations that's been. So at what point does that end of having the financial struggle? I want it to end with me. It will end with me. As long as I keep doing what I'm doing, it's going to end with me. So there for a my generation, generation curse. Yeah. yeah, a generational curse of, of having that financial burden. But again, just a reminder that even if this industry is not for you, it's not something you want to pursue, have your insurance policy because it's the first shock of wealth for your family. And if you want to follow up with, well, what are they going to do with all that money? That's why you put it in a trust. That like you, like you get lawyers, you get you, you get notarized. Mm -hmm. Hey, they got to go to a financial advisor. Hey, they got to speak to so-and-so. Or um, even take it one step further, mandatory. Once I this insurance policy pays out, it is mandatory for my children to own an insurance policy. Mm. So you can even set, a lot of people well, take realize it, that. Take it a step back. Yeah, exactly. but, take it, but take that a step back. What if, like car insurance, you're required to have permanent life insurance? So would that ever the, happen? No, the, no you don't the let it happen. Would, the government would not. No, you, you would change. You would change. Why, why would not the government want it to be mandatory? Now you're no longer tax reliant tax. on them. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Tax life insurance. So <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna have people that keep pushing term, 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 because remember the insurance is cheaper the better, cheaper the better, cheaper the better, cheaper the better. Okay, well that makes sense if you're just having regular insurance. But again, you go through numbers, 98% of term never pays out. Most people don't save. Well, the guy says, oh, if you save, you're gonna get this rate of return. Has it been working out? Yeah, it's not. Has it been working out? Because people don't invest the difference. They either spend the difference or lose yeah. the difference. They don't even know where the difference is, <laughs> right? Or they're wearing it on their feet, their back, or their wrist. That's where the difference goes. So let's, let's discuss that. Kyrie said, did you want any uh, Yeah, go, go. I wanna go deeper too though, Coach. For example, like, in most of the communities too as well, how how we have these type of challenges when it comes to example, you know, someone says, you know, I went, I had insurance through this particular company yeah. uh -huh. and it was 10,000 or it was 15,000 and it didn't pay out because of certain elements that they had in their health that they didn't disclose, but this client didn't have the policy for X, X amount of years. And then an agent of our caliber, what will we offer you know, now we have to overcome that particular hurdle. Or the biggest challenges too is what they did to my great, great, great grandparents back in the day or something like that. And, yeah. you know, they had life insurance and the, the bank actually, you know, kept the life insurance policy and made a profit off of them, right? So how do we overcome those particular hurdles? Yeah, well, the life insurance industry, just like any other industry in America, has been evading change in inflation. Yeah. To not think that the life insurance industry, just like any other industry, and by the way, the life insurance industry is the wealthiest industry. Mm -hmm. I say, the so you industry is willing to innovate and change and grow to as well? Absolutely. And so with the Tatias, and so with provisions, they allow it easier for people to obtain insurance. So though they just need to be made aware. So we talk about education, but before you have education, you got to create awareness. Yeah. Right. And there's not enough awareness being created in America, and that's why this is motivation behind the podcast. It's to create that awareness. So therefore, they can take it to the next level and want to be educated. 
the other part about that also is is we can look at a scenario. People get I, I just got in the mail the other day. I open up a new uh, uh, bank account with a credit union. I get on the credit card. And guess what they offer me? Life is life is life is yeah. <laughs> accidental. Accident. And people think that accidental insurance. Yes, life, life, life is insurance. Oh, that's what that's happening to COVID. Or you get a credit card and they buy credit protection life insurance, right? And it's so cheap. It's just gonna pay the credit card off. Or you have to die, back to accidental. You have to die in an accident instantly in order to have it. So, so, so. And, and if you don't die in an accident and you just die of natural cause, heart attack, stroke, cancer, you don't get an accidental mm. death claim. So back to reviewing with somebody, a life insurance agent. And how, how, let me ask you guys this question. How many times have you guys lost deals to another insurance agent competitor, like a New York Life or a State Farm or a, a Northwestern agent? How many times have you lost? I'm just talking about how lack, how much there's such a lack of life insurance agents in the field today. Yeah. How many times have you lost business? I don't, think I've, I don't think I've ever lost Recently, we've been we've been insurance agents for seven years now. And they haven't lost. I don't. I I can't sincerely, honestly. It's not something you even worry about. No. 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 Now, now, when you got an industry where the number of real estate agents just in the state of California equals the total amount of agents actively in the entire nation, just California real estate agents versus the life entire insurance, nation. Great. Well, there's three hundred there's three hundred five eighty five. Licensed agents yes. in the country, but it's 360 million Americans. But other three, we know very well, 385,000 of them are not active. And they can't help everybody, even if they were no, all even active. If, yeah, exactly. They can't even the help population. everybody. There's no way. no way. There's no way. So, so. Yeah, because if you just take the working class, it's 150 million in the working class. Right. In America. Right. We're not even nowhere close. close yeah. That's why this industry produces so much, so many millions. The, 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 yeah. You know what I, what I like? I was talking to a buddy of mine that does real estate. And I said, listen, your clients have to jump through freaking hoops. So I pull up to the house. I like Better the front close. yard, but I don't like the backyard. Go to the next one. I like the front yard. I like the backyard, but I don't like the living room. Go to the next one. I like the front yard, the backyard. I like the living room, but I don't like the neighborhood. Go to the next one. I like the front yard, the backyard, the, the, the kitchen, the living room. I don't like a cul-de-sac. Go to the next one. It's too far from the grocery store. Go to the next one. It's too far from the school. It's like, bro, you gotta jump. And then at the end, to tell you what, we're going to rent. Clear the clothes. <laughs> Clear the clothes. Oh my God, bro. So not only do you have to, they have to have the perfect credit with the perfect down payment, with the perfect payment, with the perfect house. The conditions to close. And the conditions to close. And then on top of that, if they buy a, their living room set in the middle of escrow, they're out of escrow. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm like, Don't make any major No. And, and it, yeah. It's like I telling my guy. I said, listen, brother, everybody from the age of 14 days old all the way to 85 is my clients. Everybody. I walk into a house. The, it, a worst case scenario, which nine times out of ten we close, but if we don't, it, it took me thirty minutes. I didn't drive around town for them to tell me, "Don't worry, we're gonna rent for hundred bucks." Thank you. See, yeah. here's where it's our, insane. Here's where our biggest enemy is: it's a lack of awareness and education. Yep. My other enemy is the crazy part about this enemy. It's not that anybody else is procrastinating. Oh yeah. Can yeah, you yeah. guys give me a story? Yeah, Maybe it's a horror story, but somebody. That procrastinated on getting life insurance, and sadly tragic. I I can actually share two. Uh, the first one was um, when I used to work at I used to work at Time Warner Cable. I used to work at Time Warner Cable, and um, there was a young lady that I worked with, and um, you know then I transitioned from Time Warner to other jobs, and then eventually landed here. As a custodian. As a no 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 as Time Warner Cable, I was a trainer. I was a trainer. I, call, I trained the call center. No, 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 no. Custodian, custodian. Um, and and uh, long story short, I we recon I reconnected with her, and uh, she came on board as an agent, um, and we just kept following up, following up, and and she just kept postponing, 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 and then um, I guess on her way home, on her way home, um, I guess she fell asleep at the wheel. And uh, she ended up, uh, she crashed and she died on the scene. Um, and and it's interesting because I got a call from her sister. She, the, the, the agents uh, blocked my number, so I, I, oh, wow. I couldn't call her anymore. Like every time I called her, it would go to you're voice phone. Yeah. Being too pushy. Uh, the, huh? Too pushy. I guess too pushy, yeah. And, um, and her sister called me. And she said, "Yeah, we're, we're calling. Uh, we're, are you her agent? Because uh, we're we're bat we're struggling with her with her work, 
because uh, they don't want to pay out her her the 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 life insurance that she had. She, 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 she didn't die on a job. She didn't die on a job. She didn't die on a job. And so she asked she asked me. She's like, man, this is like our last resort. Like, did she ever get any insurance? I said, oh my god. I'm like, I'm so sorry, but Damn. she didn't. She didn't, um, and she had, she left three kids behind, all under the age of 18. Another story is um, another individual that came into the business um, where we were trying to explain to her the importance of life insurance. She was currently going through a divorce. She had five children, all under the age of 18, going through a divorce, but this individual, um, you know, I, I don't want to speak ill, but I mean, the reality is, is that she chose the parting life. And she didn't see this as a as a ah, I'm young, it's not important, you know, and, and she postponed it. And um, later on, we found out that uh, she she had died from uh, fentanyl. Uh, she went to a bar and I guess someone laced her drink oh, and they found her two days later. Uh, they did a wellness check because she wasn't she didn't show up to work and uh, they, they knocked on the door. They then they found her on the floor. Oh, and what? no, no insurance. Going through a divorce, you know, left all those kids. Don't behind. you have another one where you guys were going to insure the parents of somebody? Oh yes. Can you tell that that one was pretty? This was crazy, guys. This was so. Insane. So uh, my wife sat with uh, with a couple, uh, husband and wife, and they got insurance. And we told them, you know, well, look, let's let's insure your children. No, my kids are young. They were, I believe, um, ten. There were brothers, 10 and eight, something like that. And um, and they're like, no, 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 you know, we're good. You know, we're the ones that need insurance, not them. They're young. Nothing will ever happen to them. And, 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 and you know, we we pushed. Right. But um, ultimately, they made the decision to pass on insuring their kids. Well, we found out about two weeks later, two or three weeks later, the family went to a little area where they can ride the quads. Uh, near, near, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, and um, I guess it was the brother, and the, the the brothers were in one little quad. They weren't doing anything crazy. They weren't doing anything crazy. They were just, you know, going along the trail. But I guess some guy that was drunk, uh, you know, the the ones you, the canams, the canams, the big one, the big the razors. Yeah. yeah, I guess the guy was drinking, and he 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 uh, he flew off a no 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 he flew off a hill and landed right on top oh, of shit. on the on both kids and they both they both That's passed crazy. away. Oh, Man, yeah. I have a personal story. It's crazy. So I got started in the industry and uh, you know we do field training and and we go tell our friends family. So um, I had my trainer go to my dad and talk to my dad about life insurance. And my dad, Middle Eastern guy. Someone sold him the idea that he wasn't dying and he bought into it. So when I told him about life insurance, he said, I'm not going anywhere. I don't need it. Right. Eight years later, he has glioblastoma, which is cancer of the brain. Mm. And uh, he, he didn't have anything. So he got sick. And so in April, he got diagnosed. And in September, he passed away. In between that time, had he purchased the insurance and he could have afforded it, uh, we would have able to send him to a, a facility to get the help and the care that he needed. Uh, not out of our pocket, but out of the insurance company, right? The insurance company paid for it, but we didn't have it. So the burden was left on who? Mm-hmm. On me, my mom. And so we were left with a, a large bill. And then my father passed away with leaving nothing. And my mom at the age of 70 still had to work. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's very important. We don't think about it now, but we always have to think about the future. And you, you got to be a for, see, life insurance is for people that are forward thinkers because you have to be prepared for what's going to happen. And we don't know what will happen and when will it happen. We might be healthy now and God willing, we will be forever. But, you know, we just have to remember of the ones that we're going to leave behind. And yeah. we have to care about the score for life insurance. Yeah. Get cheaper. If when you're younger, it'd be 100%. Yeah. yeah. And the, and the, the, the misconception is that if I'm young, I don't need it. And I've I've come across so many people in their 18, 20s and say, oh, my mama say I don't need it. It's like, right, look, full blown ass man, you mama told Yeah, I know, man, it's the craziest thing. You know, why would a parent say you don't need something if you're that young? And, not, and number two, you know, another story is, you know, we, we met with an individual, she was in her 20s. And, you know, it's the holiday season, right? Oh, I get to it after the holiday is over. I get to it after the holiday is over. 
my agent didn't want to push, right? And so she said, okay, I'm going to meet with you guys January 1st, right? So December 31st, she's at a party, and uh, I guess she drank too much, whatever the case may be. She was on the stairs, fell backwards, breaks her neck at the bottom of the stairs, leaves three kids behind, no life insurance, right? And then we also get people who's grown, like Ricky saying, they say, well, my mama got a Gerber life policy on me. You're an adult. Why are you still worrying about what your mama got on you? I get that a lot, too. You know, it's, well, it's insane truth. to me. Yeah. I understand you look like a Gerber baby. Who doesn't <laughs> <laughs> Or act like a Gerber baby. Yeah, so so the, the, for, for people watching this, you're, you're looking at the, this roundtable cleanse entrepreneurs. And the initial thing about the insurance industry is none of us got involved in this as our first job. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was, yeah, and yeah, born for this. Yeah, right. Born for We were born for being insured. People are attracted to the life insurance and in financial services industry because somehow, some way, we've dealt with some form of financial pain. Yeah. And now that we've been educated about it, and uh, like I said, because we make, we, we gain more wealth of knowledge, not through our good mistakes with money, but more through our bad mistakes yep. with money. And Education is about learning things for yourself, but wisdom is learning things through other kids. And so, uh, as, as we wrap up this podcast, guys, uh, what we're going into the next year, and the country is in the state that it's in. I'm going to back. And Here we go. Uh, the the economic condition of its citizens yeah. is in a situation that is in. Well, quick, guys, give us it was sixty seconds. Your message to America right now. Your message to the person watching this podcast or listening to it. What do you want to have left in the right to think about going forward after listening? It's, it's some it's crazy what's going on in the community. You know, you have the politicians knowing that these public schools are are using free money and they're forcing them with different type of curriculum to uh, pass down to our kids um, at an early stage. You know, I'm not I'm not here saying you know I'm against this against that, but I feel you know my child at five years old should not be taught you know, uh, different sexual activities are different, you know, men on men or women on women um, at this stage, because at this stage of their life at five years old, you know, they, they soak everything up. So the biggest thing I would share to, to anyone is in order for us to defend ourselves and protect ourselves against the bullies is the biggest thing is cash is green. You know what I mean? So I, I increase options, increase options. I would say tap into an industry where there's no cap on your income in the next two, three years, put your head down and make as much money as possible so you can so you can dictate not only your family future, but your your kids future, too, as well uh, and their future kids, too, as well. So that's one of the biggest points I would share um, to those that's watching the podcast and, and looking and sharing what we have to say. Um, going into 2024, I believe that. We are at a point of what we call a critical analysis. Critical analysis meaning this. In 2024, you either have to make a decision for or against. One thing and one thing. The political climate, you know, we're approaching in 2024, is going to be so tense. I also believe that between de-dollarizations, you know, between, you know, uh, uh, between between BRICS, yeah, Brazil, Russia, India, China. Yeah, that craziness going on there. In addition to that, the current issue with interest rates, with mortgage and all kind of stuff. But coupled with that too is the introduction of artificial intelligence or artificial general intelligence, the sophisticated version. I believe if you go to 2024, that's one responsibility everybody have to have. Is number one, have a clear plan. And number two, like embellish yourself in personal development because when your mind is working at full capacity, it is very difficult for anybody to get one over you. That's 2024. Yeah, yeah. yeah because right. See, you tell somebody yes or no. That's yeah. right. Well, the, the the school system here in America is well, it's it's confusing people. That's what they're doing, and, and it's the lack of education that's holding people back. So, what I think is the government doesn't want people to know. How, or doesn't want to equip people so they can have a lot of leaners on the government generationally. So they, they want to develop a lot of leaners. But what we need to do is start developing a lot of leaders in the community so they can lift all ships because the rising tide lifts all ships. If I learn about financial education and I teach it to my children, they teach it to their children and, and the generations go on. 
that's how you can make your neighborhoods better and get them out of that hood mentality and get them into neighborhood mentality where we're all teaching each other how to become better as human beings and to be prepared for the next generation and to leave generational wealth because generational wealth is built through life insurance and the wealthy do that and they keep it in their community. That's why we all have a money blueprint and our money blueprint comes from the way our parents thought. Sometimes our parents don't think about this stuff because they weren't taught about it. So now it's our duty that we know about it to teach the next generation so they can be equipped so they can do better for the next generation. So in 2024, I wish and I hope that a lot of people get the education that they need. And usually it comes from people like us that go to their kitchen table and we give the education for free to them. Now they say knowledge is power, but it's applied knowledge that is power. If you know that life insurance is there and you don't have it and you can afford it and you die and leave a lot of bills for your family, that's on you. You know, and your family is going to have to pay that price. So everybody needs to apply the education that they know about finances and, and make their generations better. So that's it. The last love letter and then leave your family. That's it. Yeah. Yes. And, and my message, I mean, in 2024, you know, going back to your point, Matt, about what what what's wisdom, you know, wisdom here, according to Wikipedia, it's defined as the quality of having experience, knowledge and good judgment. Um, you know, my suggestion to everybody that's listening to this, that's watching this, is equip yourself with information, the right information. Uh, wisdom is, you can either build it through experience or you can build it by who you associate with. Um, you know, again, going back to, I went from a 28,000 a year income to, to now this upcoming year, uh, really driving to a million dollar income. And and the reality is, I only have a high school diploma. But you have a PhD. PhD. I have a high, yeah, exactly. Like public public a PhD. Yeah. A public high school diploma. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so 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 my message to everyone watching this is, um, you know, guys, things are changing. Things are changing fast. Um, research your options. Don't fall for the status quo. Uh, don't don't you know explore different uh, opportunities out there. Um, you know, that, that, that's gonna, that, that's gonna help shift and change your life to the lifestyle that you want to live. Uh, stop listening to people that are telling you that you're worth nothing because you didn't get a, a fancy degree because you didn't go to a fancy school. Um, you know, I'm talking to the 65% that realized, you know what, school wasn't for me. So, oh, damn. So I guess I'm a I, I'm I, I guess I mean, I, I have no value here in the marketplace because I don't have a degree. That's that's so untrue. It's so false. There's so many people with so much potential, so much value that that we're, we're just listening to the wrong people and why we're listening to the wrong people, because we're wrong, the wrong we're, we're around the wrong association. So put yourself in an environment that's going to help you elevate. That's going to help capitalize your true potential your god-given gift that, that that he gave you and and just make 2024 one of the best years of of your life that's that's gonna forever change everything about your future so and that's my message that. when you decide to raise your standards you become very annoying you they don't want to have you come back down to the position today is grew up with you and, and, and understood you at so very good point plus yeah, I would say um, at this point, man, if you made it through this podcast up until this point, kudos to you uh, for making this far, watching this. And um, going into 24, 2024, stop looking at things as being interesting. And because there's a lot of interest, you know, I, I know sometimes we get frustrated with people because, you know, they say I'm interested. And um, you're interested in a lot of things. You can watch the Discovery Channel and <laughs> look at a lion in the jungle and say, oh, that's interesting how they do that. Okay, cool. Well, this information that we give you is not just supposed to be interesting. This information is so you can take action. Come on. So the biggest thing in 2024 is take action. Yeah. You got a table full of people that you can reach out to via social media, through Instagram, hit us in our DM. We actually respond. Yep. Right. And we're willing to sit down and help you no matter where you are uh, uh, in a nation to have a conversation with you, to help you take action. So that's what I would say to you. I'll be crazy. Yes. Um, well, my message for you, 2024, don't matter who you vote for, bro. Ain't nobody coming to save your ass. Yeah. <laughs> if you vote for Trump, he ain't going to save your ass. If you vote for Biden, he ain't going to save your ass. He's for sure not going to save your ass. <laughs> 
Uh, ain't nobody gonna save you. Um, you are your, your you are your savior. Uh, obviously, apart from our Lord and uh, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but outside of that, you're your only family savior. Your family is depending on you. Stop waiting for a president. Stop waiting for policy. Stop waiting for others. You got to get an action now. So a lot of people are, you know, well, we're gonna wait to see who's gonna be president to determine what moves you're gonna make. That's not how life works. If you're always waiting, you'll stay waiting. You'll die waiting. So in 2024, and even now, make a decision now. Make it since December. You know what? I don't want to have a 2024 like way I did 2023, where you're getting rattled when you watch the news, where you're getting you're getting so shooken uh, by what's going on with politics, where you're getting so shooken by what's happening in the schools in the schools. And to piggyback on what everybody said, make your bread so you can make those decisions for your family. The only time you become powerless is when you don't have the resources to get your family out of a situation you don't want them in. But guess what? That is not an option for you if you decided to sit back and chill. And, and and take a and take the back seat to life. So my advice to you again, I'll, I'll start. I'll finish the way I started off. Nobody is coming to save you. You have to save yourself. You got to do what's best for you and your family. And if that means you being a little bit uncomfortable, for you to put your family in a position to have the freedom to make the choices that you feel is best for you, and not what the government or the school system or your local politician thinks, then you got to get that money. Get money smart. That's the only way. That 2024 is going to get better for you. Plug. I love it. Right. Greg, what, that's an awesome. I, mean, I made money with a Republican president. Yep. I made money with Democratic president. This man, what goes on in the White House, the most Definitely. important thing, what goes on in your house. Yep. Uh, I'll make money. I'll make money with even Barney's president. <laughs> I don't care. Because he, he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Yeah, he's the president right now. Except Barney didn't fall over. <laughs> no, Barney remembers the songs. Yeah, he does. So. Yeah. Right. That's just right. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> Let's go, Brandon, baby. Look, let's way. go, Barney. Let's go, Barney. So I'm sitting here at a table with all successful entrepreneurs in your personal life, business life. So let me say one more thing, because what separates everybody at this table from everybody else is their own personal FICO score. At the end of the year, New Year's resolutions, two most popular things. Yeah. I want to lose more. Wait. wait make more. Money. money. And what always happens, they always lose more money and make more weight. <laughs> So if you want to make some fast money, just go become a sales rep at a gym membership. You're going to sell memberships like hotcakes. But why is it they sign up January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, but by February 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, they're, they're gone. They never show up again. Because they, they didn't, they did not keep their word to themselves. And they keep freaking doing that every year over and over and over and over. I got a plan. You you haven't looked at your business plan. I, I know I'm going to do this. I'm, this is my year. Stop it. It's not your year because you still have the same damn habits that got you in the situation that you're in. So number one, if you're gonna create a plan, make a list of what habits you need to improve upon. But two, check your FICO score for yourself, not your, your personal credit score, which is you paying off your debts. Check your FICO score, do you keep your word? I'm gonna lose 10 pounds in the next six months. Awesome, are you still doing that? Well, look this. I'm gonna start a business. I'm gonna do this, this, this with my schedule. I know that I'm working my full-time gig and I got my part-time business, da, da 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 Keep your word to yourself. So I think if we improve our own personal FICO score, keeping our word, whether it's in your faith, your finances, your fitness, your fun, your fashion, all the Fs, I think we just keep our word to ourselves, which is the FICO score. I think 2024 is gonna be very bright and it's gonna be very money smart. I, I, I agree too as well. Little plug. <laughs> but yeah, I meant, amen to that. I got four questions for you before I let you go. Number one, how has your year been financially? Okay, ask yourself that question, write it down. Second question, how much differently financially speaking do you want your next year to become? Third question, what's your plan? And is it a plan that is a hope? Is it a plan that's got a proof of concept? Or are you hoping that that plan actually works? Because the fourth question is, who's actually helping? The reason why we are all at the position we are is we followed a man, an entrepreneur, like that had a plan and it worked just his word and he kept his word and he had a vision he cast a vision by the way that vision a lot of people laughed at the guy's vision a current visionary is a present liar well that just finish. until that vision continues hitting the gas with that vision until that vision becomes a reality and then a visionary is known as a prophet mm -hmm. So you can be that type of person for your family. Because when I realized, I'm talking about Black Friday, all these different holidays and sales, when I started to control my income, every day became Black Friday. That's right. He or she that controls your income, controls your life. That's right. Let me say, gentlemen, 
What an awesome retreat we've had here thus far. We got one more thing to go. That's we're gonna it. have an after party tomorrow at yes. Patrick Davis' house. We're gonna have a blast. Talk about the entrepreneur of the American Gym right there, right? That's right. That, uh, true, that guy who's filmmaker. an immigrant from Iran. Yep. They you know is one of the most influential men in the world. A once in a generation see that we have a That's pleasure true. and opportunity to hang around for the life. Learn from that. Uh, uh, what a life we can learn from. And uh, thank God we uh, ended up on somebody's list to call to bring us into this type of conversation. True. We extend that to YouTube as well. We put all the Instagram handles in the scripture center uh, descriptions below. Make sure you follow these gentlemen and their journey too as well. For regardless of what seat and state they're in, reach out to some somebody in your local seat and state. We got people across the country. We have forty thousand licensed agents across the country. We want you to make sure if you don't have a plan, you have anybody in your corner, reach out to us. Because we definitely have a plan. We got some people, the right people, to help you out. That being said, guys, appreciate you guys for coming in. And uh, to this, if you qualify, I just come in and qualify yeah. to be here. Because not every, a lot of people back home right now would love to be here, but you guys qualified to be here. And uh, we'll awesome. look forward to uh, tomorrow and the years, that, because this is an annual thing. That being said, guys, if you haven't done so already, hit subscribe, hit like, drop your comments. You agree with us? You don't agree with us? Please put in a comment section below. That being said, on behalf of the gentleman here, I'm a money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to smart. Continue love smart. Everybody's smart. Today. Today.